when someone accidentally threw away the school play costumes, Oh, no! Replacements were shipped with FedEx. And with picture proof of delivery, everyone could focus on the perfect opening night. FedEx, where now meets next. For residential delivery only. If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven, natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2368. Can I do high-intensity training, or HIT every day? By Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Happy Monday and welcome back to another week of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web, kind of like an ongoing audiobook, and always with my commentary at the end. And with that, let's get right to the post for today as we optimize your life. Can I do high intensity interval training or HIT every day? By Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. I lift weights for two hours and do 30 minutes of HIT every day, wrote one MuscleEvo reader. Are there any negative issues that might result? Will I lose muscle gains by doing this? There are indeed a few negative issues with this current training routine. Firstly, lifting weights for two hours every day comes to 14 hours of training a week. That's way more than most people need or can even recover from. I know guys on the juice who are doing less than that. In the majority of cases, three to five hours of strength training per week is plenty. That's more than enough to get the job done. Second, it says to me that you're not entirely clear on what you're trying to achieve. Do you want to build muscle, burn fat, improve your conditioning? It's my opinion that you're better off having one clear goal like fat loss, or muscle growth, and focusing on that goal to the exclusion of everything else. Trying to go in several different directions all at the same time almost always leads to a frustrating lack of progress. If your main goal is to build muscle, some light cardio two or three times a week for 20 to 30 minutes is plenty. And by light, I'm talking about something that gets your heart rate up to around 60 to 70% of its maximum. A brisk walk and the fresh air first thing in the morning will do the job just fine. You certainly don't need to do HIT every day. The metabolism boosting benefits of HIT are exaggerated. HIT is often promoted as the best form of exercise for getting rid of body fat, mainly on the basis that it raises your metabolism in the hours after exercise to a greater extent than moderate or low intensity activity. However, the size of the post exercise calorie burn after an intense workout known in scientific circles as EPOC or EPOC or excess post-exercise oxygen consumption just isn't as great as some people seem to think. A review paper synthesizing all the research comparing moderate intensity continuous training with high intensity interval training or HIT does conclude that HIT provides a greater reduction in total absolute body fat than steady state cardio. However, while the difference between HIT and steady state cardio was statistically significant, the real world difference isn't worth getting excited about. After 30 to 35 workouts, the average amount of fat loss with HIT was 3.5 pounds or 1.58 kilograms, compared to 2.5 pounds or 1.13 kilograms with steady state cardio. That's not much of a difference. Nobody's getting out of bed for an extra pound of fat loss over a 10 to 12 week period. And third, HIT is a very demanding form of training. Doing high-intensity interval training every day on top of a daily strength training routine, which, if you're doing it properly, is not entirely unlike HIT in that it involves short bursts of intense exercise, will seriously impair your ability to recover and grow. Here's what Gray Skull Barbell Club owner John Schaefer has to say on the subject. Quote, Once the base of strength is established, The decision is then made as to what is appropriate in terms of conditioning work. If something's going to be added to a program, then one must understand that total recovery ability will be spread thinner than it previously had been. 
If someone was formally lifting weights three days per week and resting on the other days, then they are in for a rude awakening if they attempt to add three high-intensity conditioning workouts on the days in between. Oftentimes, the simple addition of a single stress outside of a regimented program can bring progress in the program to a halt, or at least slow it down considerably. End quote. Let me repeat that last sentence. Quote, Oftentimes, the simple addition of a single stress outside of a regimented program can bring progress in the program to a halt, or at least slow it down considerably. End quote. In other words, doing high-intensity interval training every day alongside a training routine designed to make your muscles bigger and stronger has the potential to put the brakes on muscle growth. Martin Burkhan, high priest of intermittent fasting, makes a similar point. Quote, Even though you burn more calories in less than half the amount of time compared to, for example, brisk walking, HIT is very draining on the central nervous system, in stark contrast to lower-intensity cardio, which you can do for a much longer time with much greater frequency. For someone interested in fat loss and strength maintenance, and not metabolic conditioning primarily, including HIT too frequently, is playing with fire. End quote. Back in the day when I was an interval training fundamentalist, the only cardio I did was 20 minutes of HIT first thing in the morning, three times a week. I considered anything other than HIT as nothing more than a wasted opportunity for progress. Given the superiority of HIT over steady state cardio, I thought to myself, why spend time doing something that takes longer and is less effective? What I learned the hard way is that high intensity interval training is very tough on the body, especially if you combine it with three days a week of heavy strength training and a calorie-restricted diet. While HIIT training helped me drop fat as well as maintain a reasonably high level of conditioning, I noticed that it had an adverse effect on my strength levels in the gym, and I would often feel burned out, tired, and irritable. Why daily HIIT workouts aren't a good idea. If you want to do exercise every day, rather than daily HIIT workouts, you're better off with some kind of low-intensity exercise, like walking or even riding a bike. Cycling is often the ideal form of exercise to pair with resistance training, mainly because it's a lot easier on your joints than running or sprinting. Daily HIIT workouts will quickly lead to a physiological state of overreaching, a term used to describe temporary overtraining. You just end up digging yourself into a hole that can take weeks to recover from. In summary, Lifting weights and doing HIT every day is not a great idea. If you want to do HIT while you focus on building muscle, limit it to a couple of short HIT sessions a week. You can also program HIT after lifting, doing sprint interval cycling immediately after training your legs. Done in this way, HIT serves as a finisher for your quads, helping to improve your cardiovascular fitness without interfering with muscle growth. You just listened to the post titled, Can I Do Hit Every Day? by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Last week, I read to you an article about overtraining. I mentioned that overtraining is something we all will probably experience at some point. This is because if we start a fitness program and understand that we need to change up our workouts to keep improving, we'll probably end up overtraining at some point. Now, how do we know we're overtraining? Well, classic symptoms would be feeling exhausted all the time, poor athletic performance, having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, moodiness or irritability. And as you heard from today's author, Christian, doing HIIT training every day could lead to overtraining. Now, that doesn't mean we should never incorporate HIIT, but instead, allow your body a break between HIIT workouts. I love Christian's suggestion about using HIIT as a finisher at the end of your workouts. I also like to incorporate longer duration, low intensity cardio on days in between my high intensity days to give my body some time to recover. So play around with these different ideas and see what works best for you. Either way, it's important to listen to your body. All right, that'll do it for the Monday episode. I hope you have a great start to your week and I'll be back here tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.